Could you tell us about the program that you work with? I work with uh, the Head Start program at Gobogatsen. Uh, it's working with children and f uh, families, but the program that I'm in is the Head Start program, and we deal with we work with uh, three and four year olds, some five year olds, but mostly three and four. And what is the aim of your program, or what are the learning objectives that you have for the kids you work with? Well, right now we're working with um, a curriculum that's, um, I can't remember the name of the, but it, it deals with uh, emotions and uh, um, getting the children to have more control of their emotions, their uh, feelings, and um, It's pretty good. Um, we're trying to get them to uh, learn more, con you know, self-control, and um, we're not stressing the, you know, like the academic part so much, you know, like the ABCs and that. And we also would like the children to start learning their first. Uh, First Nations language, which is Blackfoot in this area. So we, we um, are, are introducing, because most of them don't, well, all of them don't speak Blackfoot, and most of the uh, parents, the families, don't speak Blackfoot. So it's sort of like an introduction to them so they can start hearing it and learn the basics, like, they're counting in Blackfoot their colors and the weather, simple commands, like if you want them to sit down, so I'll say sit down in Blackfoot. Uh, whatever we want them to do, we tell them in Blackfoot and, and English so they'll know what we're talking about. Uh, there's also uh, a Blackfoot prayer that the Bogasin uses, so we've been teaching them that. Yeah, so that's, I guess, basically what we're doing right now. So, in your opinion, what makes this program an example of excellence in Indigenous education? Well, the fact that there are native speakers here that we can um, teach the uh, children the, the Blackfoot language. Uh, it's a place for the native families in Lethbridge to come to because it's like for the whole program, it's not just Head Start and um, kindergarten. There's daycares here now. Um, there's uh, after-school programs for the older children, and there's um, another program for uh, mothers and babies, or fathers. And so there's there's a lot of programs that are running out of this Obogatsin to help the native uh, families in the area. So that I think is. Um, because they're away from their reserves and um, a lot of them it's their first time away from reserves so I think it's a good place for them to come to if they need any help in, in their transition of reserve. How would you measure the success of the Head Start program? Uh, well, for me as you know, being in the classroom, it's seeing the children progress from when they first come in. From little things as um, just being able to um, to help the child 
with the separation issues because a lot of them is the first time they're away from the parents so it's kind of difficult for them to um, to let go so even seeing them break that you know get past that and then um, working with them in the classroom we like they get their lunch here just to get them to some don't eat just to get one to start picking at their food eating tasting to where they're eating I think um, being an elder just being able to sit with the kids give them comfort when they need it um, some may not get that at home some may not have grandparents so it's just being able to love these kids and give them lots of love yeah seeing them seeing them from when they first come in September to when they leave in in June just to see the the growth in them I think is it's really good so from your perspective, what is in Indigenous education, just in a really broad sense? Indigenous education to me is, first of all, introducing them to the language, to their culture, to just, just to learn about where they come from, I guess. As a Blackfoot elder, how do you think Blackfoot education should be? To have elders present so that they can help these children with their, um, to know, for them to, to learn the language, to know their culture, to know that they, they are important, and um, to have to have the language introduced to them and and their families so that our language doesn't die out because I think it's getting close to that. I think. So how do you see that developing over the next 10 years? I think to have more um, more uh, native representation in the schools, not just here, but in in um, the public schools, and um, to have more of the history of natives being to be taught in the schools. I guess what's happened to native people in the past to tell the natives the native story, the you know how how natives lived before the white man came and what happened after the white man came, the boarding school era, all the um, 60s scoop. And I think all those things need to be told and learned along with other history in, in schools. So what kind of information materials or resources would be useful in advancing that vision? Well, I think to to in, uh, include, you know, this history in in the school curriculums and to have um, native speakers to be in the school so that they can help uh, teach the native language whether it be, you know, Blackfoot here or in Saskatchewan or wherever, you know, there are Cree languages and what other, you know, native languages are spoken. Mm -hmm. To have people there to help teach those. Yeah, and yeah, I guess to educate educators on the Blackfoot culture and language would help.
Are there any materials or resources that would be useful to your program in terms of growing or developing the way you'd like it to? Well, uh, um, this particular program, Obogasin, has um, a lot of um, resources. Well, they, I shouldn't say a lot, but they have a lot of books on native cultures and um, uh, they bring in teachers to uh, or native speakers to teach the native language to the staff here they've I think they've done a lot in teaching or doing programs that help uh, native uh, to learn the native ways, the, the culture. And it's not just for the, the staff or the teachers here, it's for native people in the city that, you know, that can come and partake in this. So, yeah, I think uh, Obokasin is doing well. They have uh, information, like they have um, books on on the native culture and honestly I wish my tribe had something like Obukasin. <laughs> yeah. I you know, like I I really think it's um, it's a good program. I think it you know, like the children are um, are learning. Like I've been here for I think five years now and it it just um, like the, just to see the kids grow, and you, you can hear drumming. You can hear a little boy singing now. You know, just things like that. I think are you know real success stories. They you know they're not afraid to to be native you know, because they're all accepted here. Um, it's just, you know, everything that they do here, I think, is helping these students and the parents. And you can feel that when you walk in. Earlier, yeah. I was sitting here and I was smelling sweet grass. Yeah, and I was yeah. Like, oh, Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, so, yeah, even that, like, um, every Monday morning we have a smudge for the whole school. Mm -hmm. I say a prayer, you know, for the whole school. Uh, all the children and teachers come into our classroom and we do this. And then on a daily um, thing, with just in our classroom, we have a... a Every day we have a smudge for the morning class, and then when the afternoon class comes in, we have a smudge for them. And it's um, to teach them the importance of being connected to, you know, to our Creator, because that's where all life begins. And just to see them now, like when they come in in September, a lot of them you know, don't know any of this. And then now we're into January, they're learning to sit quietly in, in a circle and to know what the uh, smudge is about, who we pray to, why we pray to, you know, the Creator. And, and it's just a really good feeling to, um, to see them advance in that way too. Do you have any closing thoughts you'd like to share with people who are passionate about Indigenous education? I think uh, we need to really encourage our young people to know their cultures, to learn their language, just for all of us to love our children and, and help them grow in the right way.